Hey everybody, Skyler here with 319 Photography, 319photography.com. In this video today, we're going to go over stacking images for noise reduction in Sequator. Uh, Sequator is a PC-based free piece of software that will uh, do dark and light frame noise reduction for astrophotography images. Um, if you want to use uh, an application for doing noise reduction on Mac, then Tony created a good video for Starry Landscape Stacker, so you can go and check that out. Um, but if you want to do some noise reduction on PC, uh, let me show you how Sequator works. Um, so I've got a project already set up here um, in Lightroom, so you can see that I've got a series of light and dark frames. Um, this uh, is a series of images that I took at Great Sand Dunes National Park in Colorado. Um, at the campsite where we were, so um, I've got eight images of light frames and eight images of dark frames to uh, to use for Sequator. I've already pre-selected these down um, from a larger sequence, but uh, I exported them as TIFF files. Uh, well, there will be a different video if we want to talk about uh, image exporting and and the kind of formats and settings you want to use for that but the the rule of thumb with what we want to start with here is the raw images that we basically pulled straight out of camera here I'm going to see to shoot a sequence of eight to ten images light frames the dark frames are you can actually see if we can pull up the exif information here you'll see that the uh, exif for the exposure time the ISO um, and of course this is a I shot this with a Rokinon 14 millimeter, which is a non-computerized lens, so it doesn't show the aperture, but this is at f2.8. So you'll see that the dark frames use the exact same settings as the light frames. And the reason for that is because what the dark frames are going to give us is the noise pattern that comes across your sensor just from the ambient temperature. So when you're taking these images um, that you took in a sequence, these eight will be pretty much right after each other and then you'll put your lens cap back on and fire off these eight dark frames with the exact same settings um, and you'll see where Sequator uses these to help reduce the noise. So um, once you've got your light frames and your dark frames lined up, um, we're going to want to export them. Uh, if you pulled them in a Lightroom, um, you can export them through there. Uh, Sequator will work with TIFF files, so if you have a RAW file um, whether it's DNG files or or whatever it is that your that your camera outputs for Sony, it's ARW files. Um, you can uh, export it to TIFF so that Sequator will look at it. And like I said, there'll be other tutorials for how to do that in case you have issues with that. So let's go into Sequator here. Um, like I said, this is a piece of uh, free software that you can download if you just Google Sequator. You'll you'll be able to find it, install it. Um, so we're going to walk through kind of the steps we need to to do noise reduction and I guess just real quick to give you an idea of what we're going for here. When we zoom in on, on our image here, um, as you can see Lightroom's got to load in a little bit, you'll see that there is a significant amount of digital noise in here. Now this is an ISO 3200 image so so the Milky Way is also still a little bit dark so I'm reducing the amount of noise that I've got from that but we'll also want to pull up some uh, some exposure here and we need to do our final processing but you can see that there's the the noise in the image here and what we're gonna do is by stacking these images we're gonna reduce that amount of noise overall so that when we do our final edits we're gonna get a cleaner image so the first thing that we want to pull into our sequator files as you can see here it has star images so those will be what we also call our light frames so I don't have the directory pre-selected here, so we'll go to my Camp Astro stack, and I have them separated out into light and dark frames. So for my light frames, this is where you will have exported your files to. You can see these are TIFF images instead of the ARW raw images that I started out with in Lightroom. Um, so when I pull those in, you can see it's got them all lined up there. Now it will pick one of your images as a base image. Typically I think it'll try and grab one out of the middle. Um, and Depending on what you're doing, what this fundamentally does for what we're doing with uh, with the astrophotography landscape is it's going to basically pick the foreground that you want. So this one, as you can see, there are you know variations in the. Um, well, I guess that's not going to cycle through. <laughs> you can see in here, there's variations in in the foreground for these, right? 
but what we're stacking for uh, noise reduction here is the sky. And you can see how the, um, the Milky Way is moving across the sky as we're shooting here. And that's what we're, uh, that's what we're using Sequator to do, is to automatically align those images for the noise reduction stacking. Otherwise, you have to do it manually, which is a lot more uh, laborious. So we've got our light frames in here. It's picked a representative one. The reason I bring up the base image is because if you decide that one of the uh, other images has a foreground you want to keep, the idea behind um, this series of images that I took is I was going to use, I'm going to use this for a composite. So I don't necessarily care about the foreground here other than the fact that it's going to give me that horizon. Um, but say for instance here I've got image 7 which looks like a pretty clean foreground so I can um, update this to be the base image. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and be starting with a cleaner foreground. Um, the noise images are the ones that we're going to call uh, our dark frames. Um, which is just the series of images with the exact same exposure settings as our light frames. So we pull that in there to our noise images. Um, this also has the option to take vignetting images. This you would do um, by shooting basically against a white backdrop, um, which would give the ability to have it try and adjust for that. We're not concerned with that for what we're doing right now. Um, it's a little outside of the scope of what we need to do for, for noise reduction stacking for Astro. Um, the output file is just going to be where you want to save the output. I've, I've run this once before, so we'll um, go ahead and call this noise reduction 1. So that'll be the output file that's going to get dumped out. So let's go through some of the settings that we want to set here. So for our composition, um, We've got align stars because that's what we want to do is go through this series of images and line these stars up against the foreground so that they can be stacked for noise reduction. Um, if you look under here, we've got some options for accumulation. So we want to leave that on accumulation. Freeze ground is what we want. Um, and we want selective um, turned off because that's going to it's going to try and, so you can see here, remove aircrafts, meteors, and other unstable objects. What happens is if you do selective, then it's going to try and help. And in general, unless you really know what you're doing, we want the tool to help as little as possible. We want to make sure that we're controlling what our image does. So we're doing align stars, free, freeze ground for our sky region. Um, you can do a boundary line, a gradient, but in general it's better to do a uh, and a mask and so what this will do is allow you to paint in your sky where you want to see that right and the software so there's not as fine-tuned to control around the edges and the reason for that is the documentation for Sequator talks about how um, the algorithm itself goes along and tries to identify uh, what is moving in the image so it will so if you bleed over here a little bit into the foreground It's not going to cause us a problem with sequator because with the freeze ground setting on Sequator knows that it's looking for stars moving through the sky so it can line them up So when it starts to see part of the foreground that isn't moving it's going to go ahead and, and know what to do with that So now we've got this irregular mask set for what we want where we've painted our sky um, if you've seen Tony's video or you use Starry Landscape Stacker before, this view with the auxiliary highlight may may look more familiar. Starry Landscape Stacker has more of this kind of look to it where it kind of speckles where you find the stars versus the foreground. If you enjoy that view, you can see it. Otherwise, you get this wonderful sickly green mask here. Um, there's other settings here that you can play with. Auto brightness, high dynamic range. These are, again, settings that are going to try and help you do things, but we want to control our image and we want to do most of our, well, all of our post-processing back in Lightroom. So we don't want Sequator helping us out. Um, for people who want to use Sequator to spit an image out that you can use right out of the gate, that's kind of what these settings are intended for, but it is not going to do nearly as good a job as what we can do in Lightroom. So for now, we're going to just leave all of that stuff turned off. Um, so these are the basic settings you need. So there's one more thing um, that is important to do for two reasons. Um, you want to go up here and you want to save your project. And the reason why is for 
two main things. One is if for some reason something happens and you close out of this, you don't get the result you like, um, by saving the project you can reopen it, you don't have to re-import your star images, you don't have to re-choose your base image. This saves all of the settings so that you can rerun this if you want to and if you want to play around with any of these settings, it gives you that option. The other reason is when you save the project like that, what it's going to create for you is inside of your project folder where you've got your Camp Astro stack, you're going to see that it gives you a mask. So there it was for my previous project, noise reduction one is my project here. So that is a mask file that's created. And we're not going to be using it for the purposes of this video. And actually that does show me that I could, I missed a little piece there. That wouldn't cause an issue with my post processing, but that's good to know. Um, you would be able to use this mask inside of Photoshop if you wanted to um, use masking for some advanced editing. That's outside of the scope of um, of this video, um, but it is there's that line right there. But it is it is good to know that when you save when you save your project, it will create that image for you, that mask that you can use. So there you can see I filled in that that gap. So. This is what we're telling the algorithm to use when it's processing it out. And so now that we've got our sky painted, we've got the settings where we want them, we're going to tell it to start and let it run through and stack the light and the dark images for noise reduction. All right, so it is now completed. 24 seconds, not too shabby. What it does throw up here is the result image, noise reduction one dot tiff. So we're looking at the final, let me see if I'm, this will open an external editor. So here we've got our final image. Now you'll see it's done a little fun with the foreground here as it stacked those across. So that's not uh, <laughs> necessarily something we're worried about. Like I said, if uh, because my foreground was inconsistent and moving, um, we're not concerned about that. It's the sky we're doing because this is like, for, for what I'm going to be doing, a composite image. Um, but if we zoom in and if this, if the Windows picture viewer will render in a little bit, you can kind of, you can see that there is less noise than before. And so we will bring up the original image. So hopefully we can do an apples to apples comparison here. So let me, I'll grab our reference frame and let that open up. Let's see if we can get roughly the same zoom level in here. We can even find r roughly the same star patterns there. So there you can there you can see this is the original single image, the the one that we used as our reference frame and here is the noise reduced stacked image. So as you can see there is a significant reduction in noise here. You've still got, um, you know, you've got very little loss of sharpness around the stars. And so as we pull back out, um, obviously when it's with it smaller like this, it's it's harder to see the difference until you're really zoomed in. But what we are going to get is going to be a much cleaner image when we pull it back into Lightroom. So here you see the original image, and here you see the noise reduced image. And you can even kind of tell there's a little bit more of a kind of almost haziness to this one because of that noise that is not present here. So again, we'll, we'll, we'll jump in one more time. See if we can give a good example of the kind of noise reduction that we've gotten here. So, so the next thing that we're going to do is let's go back into Lightroom and we'll go ahead and re-import uh, that image, or I guess import it for the first time. So we don't need to, we just need noise reduction one. We'll go ahead and skip out on these, although I get, uh, yeah, we don't need the mask or anything like that. So we're just going to grab this image that we exported from Sequator. So now we have our Sequator image. Now if we look at, again, in here, can kind of see it a little bit better than in the Windows Photo Viewer. You can see that we're getting 
significantly less noise here than let's pull up the let's pull up our light frame. Yeah, it, it's still zoomed in there, so you can even see right away the difference in the noise in this image here. All right, so we'll pull our image up in the develop module. Zoom, you know, again, we can see that the reduction in noise here, we zoom out, we can see that we've got a bit cleaner image than what we were dealing with before. See if we can cycle back and forth between here. See the, the extra noise in this one. It's a bit, and it's bit quite a bit cleaner here. So that is the basics of how you'll run Sequator to do noise reduction. This would be the point um, when you would go through and uh, start editing your Milky Way for the look that you want. Um, since you have a, a TIFF image out of Sequator, it operates just like a raw file, so you have full control over the white balance and uh, all the things that you would want from your original raw file, but now just with significantly less noise in the sky. So. Hopefully uh, that was a, a good introduction and tutorial for how to use uh, Sequator to get a significant amount of noise reduction in your astrophotography images. Um, stay tuned to 319 Photography and 319photography.com. Um, also check us out on Facebook, um, and you may be watching this on our YouTube page. Um, so anywhere that you can find 319 Photography, come check us out, and we will get more content out like this. If you have questions, feel free to reach out, and we will get back to you. And um, Thank you for spending time with us, and, and hopefully you learned something valuable. We'll talk to you guys later.